Good morning, everyone. We are back with Board from Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me live on the phone, I welcome our Chief of Police, Paul McDonald. Chief, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Chief, a number of things to review today. Uh, let's start with a burglary that happened out in Marston's Mills. Last Wednesday at approximately 5.30 in the evening, uh, we responded out to the area of 45 Newtown Santuid Road, which is right on the uh, um, Barnstable Sandwich Town Line. And while the officers were en route, um, they get a call for another call, another call in progress, puzzle Beanie in progress at 155 uh, Newtown Santuid, Santuid Road. Upon their arrival, they spoke to the uh, lady who owns the home. Um, she stated that as she arrived home, there was a suspicious vehicle parked in her driveway. As she exited her vehicle, an individual uh, ran from her house, jumped in the vehicle. Um, she tried to stop that vehicle by opening the passenger side door. The individual was able to get the car in reverse, backed out hitting her, knocking to the ground, and uh, dragging her a short distance. Um, the vehicle then took off. The responding officers, as they were approaching the scene, um, they had a good description of the vehicle. Uh, they saw the vehicle traveling up on race lane, heading into Sandwich. Um, they initiated a uh, felony stop. They stopped the vehicle just over the Sand Sandwich town line, and they ended up arresting an individual named Richard Herrera. Um, he gave an address of 110 School Street, Master Mills. However, we know he just moved down here. We know he just got out of jail. He just did an eight to ten year sentence in state prison and we know he's a known Latin king. So he's a he's a good guy to get off the street. He's a real bad guy and he's being held currently right now for twenty five thousand dollars cash bail. My goodness. Uh, so he will be behind bars for a little while. Yeah, he's a bad guy. I mean this this guy was just looking for unoccupied houses. Um I believe they're still they're still doing the follow up on him while they, while he's being held and I believe they have him for at least another four or five uh beanies out in that area. He was just driving through that area, the Moscow Sandwich Town line we worked closely with Sandwich Detective trying to identify as many bricks we possibly can. But we do expect that there will be a number of charges pending against him. Chief, is that a concern for you and the department as we're in this time of year where folks are leaving their summer homes and, and either you know going back up to the city or, or down to Florida like there's many snowbirds uh, here? Is that a concern for you that people may be canvassing those neighborhoods that they know people are going to be vacating their homes? It used to be. You know, when I first started, that was a huge problem here in the Cape. You know, We used to cover probably um, you know, six, 60 to 70 B knees and of course of a week. Um, right now, if we have two or three two or three breaks in the course of a week, that's high for us. Um, so they certainly have changed. But in the old days, that was a huge concern. A lot of times, those breaks weren't even discovered. You know, they'd close up, they'd lock up the cottage, you know, come around September, October. They wouldn't come back to the house, come around until April or May. That's when they'd be reporting the break. A lot of times, we had no idea when they occurred. But you're right. You know, in the old days, that was a huge problem. Not so much anymore right now. You know, the, the, the times of, of people breaking in to steal TV, stereos, artifacts, you know, that, that's kind of gone. Right now, they do a break. They're going in. They're looking for the medicine cabinet. They're looking for drugs. They're looking for money. They're trying to get out quickly. Sure. Uh, so, Chief, let's talk about the Willow Tree Market uh, armed robbery that happened Saturday night. A couple of 19-year-olds uh, in, in trouble for this one. Yeah, that, was, that happened around 8.30 Saturday night, that Willow Tree Market right there on Charles Street. Um, a couple of individuals walked in. Uh, they're both wearing uh, dark hooded sweatshirts. Um, one individual, Cody Martin, walked right up to the cash register. The other individual went to the right uh, by the coolers, and he was kind of standing there as they as they look out. Um, Cody Martin uh, took out a firearm, pointed at the cashier and demanded the money. Um, the cashier immediately recognized the individual, someone who frequents the, uh, uh, the Mart all the time. He thought it was a joke at first, laughed, um, says, you know, what's going on? This, this can't be happening. The guy then took out a gun. He looked at the gun. It was a small caliber pistol. Um, he didn't think it was a real gun, thought it might be a cap gun. He says, I'm not giving you the money. Then the guy actually fired around. He fired around um, over over the counter um, into the wall behind him. The individual uh, then gave up all the money. Both individuals they then took off running. Uh, one went to the right down towards uh, Bonspur Road. The other one took went towards left uh, up towards Winter Street. Uh, both individuals were quickly identified by the detectives division. And then Sunday morning, um, a couple of patrol units um, found both individuals on Main Street. And then a third individual who was a juvenile, um, 17 years old. He was with them, and when they patted him down, um, they found a small caliber pistol with him, pistol on him, which we believe was the weapon um, involved um, in the armed robbery the previous night. Um, the, right now, the the juvenile has been released, but both of the adults, Cody Martin and Lamar Pringle, um, they've been held for a dangerous hearing. Um, so they've been held no bail for at least 60 days pending the hearing. Right, and I know they pled uh, not guilty earlier this week, uh, but again, as you said, they are being held uh, pending that dangerousness hearing. They, they pled not guilty, uh, but they get, a, they get a rock solid case against them. 
Great. Uh, Chief, uh, again, we, we've been talking about this uh, for the past week and a half, early voting. It's been an unbelievable turnout uh, here at Town Hall, and I know that there were hours uh, at the Barnstable Police Station on Saturday. Also, uh, some really impressive numbers. Uh, so how did that go uh, for you to have a steady stream of people coming in and out of uh, BPD headquarters? It worked out well. You know, we talked to the clerk. The clerk wanted to have uh, one day of voting on a Saturday. Um, of course, there were no other municipal buildings open in town except for the PD. Um, we offered the PD to them. They come over Friday night. Uh, they set up the voting booths, um, and the voting time was, was set for Saturday morning between 8 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. Um, people started showing up right at 8, right at 8 o'clock and right, right through to 2 o'clock. And at the end of the day, we had exactly 600 people come in to early vote, which was, which was a huge number. And this was the first time, to my knowledge, it's ever happened, happened here at the PD. So it was a great occurrence, and uh, yeah, well, they're, they're welcome to use the building whenever they want to. Great, and we'll see how uh, early voting continues, but we've had 11% of voters already turn out. That's which huge. Is, which is pretty That's amazing. huge. It really is. That's why I think, think an average midterm election turnout uh, for the entire day is 11%. So right. that yeah. is, is a good thing. <laughs> so yesterday, Chief, of course, uh, ghouls and goblins, kids dressed up in, in Halloween costumes on Main Street for the annual Safe Trick or Treat event. Yep. But for the first time uh, this year, I believe it was the first time, Main Street was closed to traffic, which I think was a really uh, fantastic idea for the kids and the families. Well, we closed the Main Street down years ago. When we first started doing it, we closed it down. We closed it down from High School Road to C Street, and that was the only time we ever did it. Um, when we first first that off, there wasn't that many kids there, so over the year we decided to leave the street open. But then over the last two or three years, it's really become congested. It's really been been the place to come. You know, you know, everybody from all over town, all over the Cape, now bringing are bringing the kids to Main Street Hyannis. So we made a very conscious decision that this year we're going to close it down, starting at 3:30. We closed it down from Ocean Street all the way down to C Street. You know, because we just didn't, we just didn't want to take a chance of any of the kids being hurt. You know, you get the cars parked on Main Street. The kids are so small; they walk between the cars, walk out. You know, cars are seeing. You know, that's the last thing we wanted to happen. So we wanted to be a safe, secure environment for everybody. So we closed it down from 3.30 till about 6.30, and it went very, very well. Um, Main Street was jammed. This was probably the most busiest event that I've seen, and I've been to all of them. Um, just at our high-end station on Main Street, uh, we had 2,325 kids come through the door. So it was a huge turnout. Wow, that is a lot of candy to hand out on hey, It was a lot of kids and a lot of candy, and we ran out. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'm glad that everyone had a, a safe Halloween. Uh, Chief, uh, any, any kind of... Uh, Halloween related uh, incidents last night? I know no, that in the past. No. In the in the old days, in the old days, Halloween was probably one of our busiest nights. But right now, it, it, it's just very, very, very quiet. You know, most of the people, most of the uh, the kids in town, was, once they get out of school, they come right down the main street. You know, you know, the families are down there. They know police are down there. The business community is down there. So it's just a great environment for everybody. And I think most of the people now are using Main Street rather than going through different neighborhoods. You know, they still they still are out in the neighborhoods, but you know, virtually no problems at all. Certainly not as much as it was in the past. A last thing to mention, Chief, a resolution of a home invasion case that happened several years ago. What's the update here? This was a home invasion that happened back in 2014 on Keating Road, Ocean, on Ocean Street at 2 o'clock in the morning. Three individuals had broken the house. They've actually followed these people home. They knew they were in the, ho in the home. They purposely targeted these individuals. They went with baseball bats. They assaulted all three individuals. Um, within a couple of days, all three individuals were arrested. Justin Garber, Jordan Gomes, Stephen Roderick. Um, the case has just come into court now, Superior Court. The first one to go on trial was Justin Garber. And he pled out rather than go to trial. He decided to take a plea to 12 years in one day, which means he has to do 12 years. The case is still pending. Jordan Gomes is up next. And, of course, Stephen Roderick, uh, while he was being held, uh, he committed suicide in jail at the Plymouth County House of Correction. So Justin Garber has been sentenced, and Jordan Gomes is up next. Great. Well, Chief, I thank you so much, uh, as always, for joining us here on Barnstable this morning. A pleasure to talk with you, and we will chat with you again next Tuesday. Have a great day. Okay. Talk to you then. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chief of Police of Paul McDonald joining us as he does each.